And he is jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these. I think Niamata was the probably the most horrific thing I've ever seen and it's one of those things where I wasn't sure how to react emotionally or in my head what to think. The hardest part seeing how women and children were affected um, <laughs> yeah um, there was one story in particular about a woman and um, it was just really sad knowing that people <laughs> were capable of things like that um, and that they could degrade helpless people so much. To kill puts it, it's one issue, but the way they were killed is another issue. We got many puts killed inside the church, not only in this district. So much of it just seems so like pointless. You think like, why did this need to happen? Why, why did anybody ever think that killing the Tutsis was like justified or necessary? It's it's almost it makes you angry. It makes me feel angry. Like how could anyone be so stupid? Right now, I'm still wrestling with the issue of he loves us. It's easy for me to say that about me and the USP group and others that are safe and well, but it's harder for me to say that with a, a little child that had their skull smashed in. When we went into the memorial and saw the remains and saw the uh, coffins of people, um, I was in complete denial that those were actually people. I just was trying to tell myself like, no, those aren't real bones. Like those are just replicas, just to show you the number of people that died in that area. Um, and so when I left the memorial, like I was still very much like, there's no way. I couldn't deal with the fact that those were actually people. And so um, by the end of the time at that memorial, I finally just came to grips with reality that I was surrounded by people that once lived that died for no reason and it just, it broke me. As the week went on, um, I began to see um, little bits of hope and um, little bits of um, reconciliation and healing. And um, that's that was what was really comforting is just knowing that um, there are some people that are willing to forgive and to reconcile and to get past it and to just kind of in a sense move on with their lives but I know that there's still so many people that are just holding on to their hatred and to their bitterness. Forgiveness means lose twice. It means when you have lost your staff and your relatives you remain with the anger and bitterness and pain. Forgiveness means to release also that pain and bitterness and anger and let Jesus deal with the offender. While we were there we saw how a lot of different NGOs and just normal people were engaging with one another and they had a vision for the future that some countries don't really have. Um, so even though things aren't perfect there, they're you know taking it one day at a time, stepping forward, 
making improvements where they can. Most of the people in Rwanda out there, like it's some society which had that history and that's, that's true. So we find art as a way of bring, first of all, unity and reconciliation, beautify the city and share good stories. Um, all humanity is so divided and we allow ourselves to be divided. We allow ourselves to hate other people. And it takes so much effort to really break down divisions, especially ones that seem so natural and normal. It takes so much effort to really love people. It was, it was so good um, to see the hope that the Rwandan people have and what they're doing to pick up their lives after, you know, um, how they're finding ways to provide for themselves, how the government and other NGOs are making houses for people who are victims, but also perpetrators. Seeing just the amount of evil that took place there and the sinfulness made me look inside of myself and see the only evil and sinfulness that is within me. And it was kind of overwhelming at first, definitely. But just realizing that God brings, you know, beauty out of this brokenness and He brings hope to those who are hopeless. And also seeing like the forgiveness that the victims were able to have towards the perpetrators, those who killed like almost their whole families and all their friends. It was just beautiful to see that forgiveness and I saw that that forgiveness was from God and I realized that how great God's love is even for those who committed such a great evil act of evil and how His love is so great for me even though I am so sinful as well. Is the, the one who killed the husband of this lady. Okay? Now, this one came for forgiveness. And then this one has forgiven, has forgiven him. And with that one, she is saying that when she gets a problem, Calix comes in. Okay? He comes to help. If maybe he's like, you see, after there is a lot to be done here. But he is giving him, you know, a day per semi, a day per week to come and help. And that one has drilled the confidence between them. Now she can trust him and Christ can trust her. The most need of Rwanda, for Rwanda is the love of God and the power of the cross of Jesus. Because without the love of God, it will be hard for Rwanda really to have a better future. Because both sides, victims need the love of God to be able to forgive, but offenders also need the love of God to be able to confess and to repent what they have done. Like other missions, trips, or whatever you want to call it, things that I've gone on, it's more about the person helping and this good feeling that you get, but that just felt really real, like we were just making a cow shed together and laughing and jumping in the mud and I don't know, just working together and and it seemed like everyone was having a good time instead of just the people helping and the fact that they opened their home, allowed us to help, especially on the anniversary of when the genocide happened in their area, um, to open up their home to us, to tell us their stories. It was just, that was incredible. I couldn't believe their, their hospitality and what they were willing to share with strangers that they didn't even know. I really enjoyed the day that we spent with Carsa. Um, and just seeing the reconciliation that they're helping make possible between perpetrators and victims. I think reconciliation is needed anywhere in the world. And if it is possible for Rwandan to reconcile after the genocide, it is possible for families to be reconciled, it is possible for couples to be reconciled, it is possible for parents and children to be reconciled.